Animating hanging piece of equipment on a character can be painful. It can be cloth, chain, long hairs, whatever. These are very important features though because they are participate to the follow through animation of your character and it will bring a secondary motion that will help to read the global animation of your character and bring more life into it. I did explain how to create a dedicated mechanism inside my latest course, The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender. In this video, I will rapidly show you how to rebuild this mechanism, but I will also show you some improvement I did a few days ago. By the way, by the time I'm releasing this video, it must be the Black Friday time, so using the code BLACK, you will get 25% off on all my courses on my Gumroad page. Incredible! The first problematic I have solved during the course was the hanging clothes. So it's a pain whenever you rotate your character and the clothes are following. So what I did is that I created the custom properties that allow us to remove this follow rotation so that then the clothes are just hanging whenever I'm rotating the character. But there is a downside to it. Whenever I rotate the character on his Z axis to change its orientation, the cloth doesn't follow and it doesn't look super natural. So there will still be a lot of counter animation to be done to get a more natural feeling to the cloth animation. Let's rapidly rebuild such a mechanism so that we can understand what is the problem and how to solve it. So I will use a cube that will be kind of the torso of my character and then I will use another cube that will be the hanging part or the cloth part or the chain part, hair, whatever you want. I will then add an armature and I will then enable the axis because it's pretty important to see the orientation and also put them in front and then in the object option I will set it to wireframe visibility so that we can see through the bones that will help. I will then align this bone with the world space because it's gonna be easier for the animator then to understand how it behave and it will also be easier for us to understand the mechanism we are building. So I'm just kind of aligning it on the Y axis. I will then create a new bone to deform the cloth heath on the front. I will then assign those bones to the different part of our model so that it can deform properly and then I will jump into the mechanism creation. Here I'm just doing this very fast because the purpose of this video is not to show you how to parent an object to a rig but to create this close mechanism. If you want more detailed information I advise you to check out my course. So while I was promoting my course and trying to take some more money from you, I've just added a new bone and I will parent the cloth to this new bone and this new bone will be parented to the root. This will be our main mechanism bone. So once it's parented to the root, whenever I will rotate the root in pose mode, the cloth bone will follow. The idea is that we don't want this bone to follow, so we can preview it by going into the relation and unchecking in every rotation. Now when the torso is rotating, the cloth bone is not rotating at all. But as I said in many of my rigging videos, don't ever, never, ever, ever do this. It's forbidden. Some have tried before and they are now burning in hell, for sure. So to be able to trigger whether or not we have this follow rotation, I have created a new bone. This bone is parented to the root bone and now I'm clearing the parenting from my initial bone. It's Alt P by the way. I will switch back to pose mode and I will now transfer constraint from this newly created bone to the original bone, a copy location, a copy scale and finally a copy rotation. This copy rotation will be the follow rotation trigger we want to use. By playing with its influence, we will be able whether to have the follow rotation or not follow rotation mechanism we wanted to create. What I would like though is the close to follow the Z axis local rotation of this bone. So if you imagine the character, whenever it will turn right or left, the clothes will follow its rotation, but whenever it's leaning forward, for example, the clothes won't follow this rotation. 
So let's add the copy rotation using local space as a source and targeting local space too. And we will set it only on the Z axis. I will call it local Z just as a reminder. So local space to local space. And now let's rotate it. The clothes does follow this rotation, but whenever it's leaning forward, it doesn't. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. But if I now try to rotate my character, which is the cube using this torso or root controller, it does work with the leaning function, but whenever I rotate on its Z axis, it doesn't work. And this is something I've explained in detail in my course, is that whenever a bone is parented to another one and you rotate the parent bone, the child will follow, but in its transform channel, there is no information to be read. So whenever our cloth bone is following the local rotation of this bone, but there is no information in Putin, it won't be moving. We will need to cheat. And whenever you want to use the local coordinate of a bone that is parented to another one, the technique is to create a new intermediate bone. Unparent the source bone, the one with the local coordinates from everything, and add to it a copy transform from the new child. This way, our middle bone will behave as the child bone of the root because it has a copy transform, but the copy transform will input information that will be read down the chain by the cloth. And so our mechanism will work whenever we will rotate on the Z axis. I can now reproduce this mechanism onto my main character, so I will get back to it. On this character, I have the same simple mechanism we've seen before. I have this bone with a lot of constraints that is constrained by this bone, which is parented to the belt. So what I will do is that I will duplicate this bone and scale it up. And this bone, I will just parent it to the root of my character. Then I will add a copy transform from the previous bone onto it so that it will behave as if it was parented as before. And then the copy rotation from local space to local space onto the constraint bone. I will isolate all the axes but the Z axis and then we are good to go. This mechanism is finished. I hope this video helped you improving your current rig or made you curious about rigging. Don't hesitate to subscribe and give a like to this video, that's a great support and I will see you very very soon.